I've been waiting for this moment. I, I hope you realize how excited I am to talk about today's topic. On Twitter, Reuters just posted a hidden corridor, nine meters long, has been discovered close to the main entrance of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And this could lead to further findings. Yes. Believe it or not, the Great Pyramid of Giza, one of the oldest man-made structures that still stands on planet Earth, has just had a major discovery of a new corridor near the North Face entrance. And here's a video where they sent a camera into the structure uh, to see to see the, the corridor inside. It's about nine meters long. And this was detected back in 2017 uh, in a project called the Scan Pyramids Project, where what they did is they used something called muon technology, which the way I understand it as a non-science person is... Um, Muon particles hit a reflector inside the pyramid, and then they can find out where there are gaps. Um, and they did this. They did this in the Scan Pyramids product. And what they found, this right here is the corridor that they've now explored. But look at this one. This is the big void. The big void. A massive cavity, a massive, like, empty space inside the pyramid that they've never explored before. It was found in 2017, and at the time, when neither of these were explored, it was like, oh, you know, that's interesting. Maybe it's just like some noise. Maybe it's just uh, an error. Uh, the fact that this one exists should also mean that this one does physically exist. There is a gap there. So what is it? What is the scan pyramid's big void? Isn't that fascinating? I think it's fascinating. Uh, and if if this now leads to more exploration, like the problem is getting access to this because it's all stone, right? This area right here is pure like limestone. So you'd have to get through that without damaging the entire structure. Um, tough. But if we could ever get inside that, that would be huge because then. So you might be wondering, like, what, what what's all this matter, right? pyramids like what 5,000 years old who cares this could tell us how it's built my favorite theory for how the construction of the pyramid happened is the internal ramp theory proposed by the French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin who uh, instead of thinking that they had an external ramp where they pulled all the stones up the side of the pyramid uh, it's not really logical it's not really practical because the ramp would have to be bigger than the pyramid itself. Um, some people have proposed a spiraling ramp that goes around the structure in a spiral. That too faces problems with the geometry. It's hard to check the, ge the geometry of the pyramid when you have a ramp outside it. So Jean-Pierre proposed this internal ramp theory. That too has its weaknesses in explaining how the pyramid was built. Because you see this right here, this is the king's chamber. Um, and the, the lines here, the horizontal lines, are massive granite blocks. And these are massive. 70 ton stones, individually, which is 70,000 kilograms. And these would require an estimated 600 men to pull up a um, ramp. Which is a big logistical nightmare, I, I imagine, to have 600 men pull one stone. So how did they get them up there? Well, people who researched the pyramid have wondered for a while, but the Jean Pierre, uh, Jean Pierre's theory is that they used the Grand Gallery as a counterweight to lift stones. However, why would you have a ramp for such heavy stones underneath the stones themselves? That makes no sense. Therefore, hear me out. Hear me out. What if the big void? is used as a counterweight to lift the stones up here because that makes a lot more sense that makes so much more sense that could explain it when i heard the news of this announcement i got all giddy because 
one thing is like the science has been around for 2017 and the scientists they kind of know it it's true but it's very hard to get it through to egyptologists so if you don't mind can we please watch a video about the internal ram theory on the pyramid please uh, just once i just need to use today as an outlet for my curiosity about this topic and then we never have to talk about it again <laughs> Just today, just today, okay? One day, let me have my pyramid day, International Pyramid Day. So, this is a YouTube channel, if you're, if you're interested in the topic, History for Granite, and another channel called um, Ancient Architects, make a lot of good videos about this topic. And this is the one that kind of discusses where the internal ramp theory currently stands. Because Jean-Pierre had the idea for this in like the early 2000s. But they learned a lot more things about the pyramids since then, so... Sit back, let's let's learn about some some old stones. <laughs> Welcome to History for Granite. Okay. Join me to explore ancient Egypt. I feel like I'm Together, sharing my hobby with you guys right now, so that only stones from for, for context, I've watched so many movies and documentaries about pyramids since like December. I stumble into the rabbit hole and now I'm addicted. Antiquity can reveal. Please subscribe to the channel to get notified when new videos are published. And thank you so much for growing the channel. I wasn't even subbed. The I'm Great not a real fan. Of Giza has always <laughs> oh yeah, you're a pyramid fan. You got a sub. To explain how exactly this monumental stone structure was built over 45 centuries ago. How stupid is that? I am the YouTube viewer that I complain about. Cause look, I literally watch all this guy's videos, and yet I'm not subscribed. I watch this one, I watch this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Maybe you are the same with my channel, Virtual TV. Um, you could check if you are, because it helps the creators a lot, even though you just watch them. You, you could just hit the sub button, you know? The fact would, that it remains the tallest man-made structure for about four millennia is almost unbelievable. It's no wonder that the engineering required to raise all those massive stones 2.2 so million high stones. Is a problem that has fascinated humanity. Like count 1 2 3 2.2 million individual stones throughout history. So interesting is the question of how the pyramid was built that there are more That's so many about stones its construction than I can manage to keep track of. This tradition of inquiry goes all the way back to Greek How tall history. is it? 100 and, 180 meters? I, I, I know, wait. How tall is Pyramid of Giza? It's the tallest pyramid. 139 meters, but I think it was meant to be a little bit taller. Because on top here, there's supposed to be a casing stone uh, made of really fine limestone that reflects the sun. So it kind of looked like a um, shining diamond on top of the pyramid, but this one is since gone. Herodotus in 450 BC Capstone. remains the earliest written account explaining a method of its construction. Herodotus claimed that the pyramid was first completed as a stepped structure, just like the earliest large pyramids at Saqqara and Maidum. Afterwards, a series of wooden machines on each tier would raise the final blocks using the mechanical advantage of a lever. He also claims with certainty that the pyramid received its final smooth dressing starting from the top down to the bottom. Modern historians assume that Herodotus received this information from the local Egyptian guides who had embellished or invented much of what was communicated to him. After all, they too were living in an era 2,000 years after the pyramid was constructed and would be left to speculate a great deal. Herodotus is also where the idea that the pyramids were built by slaves come from because there was some writing that you know you, it would take a mad king to um, force so many men to build the pyramid but that also is is questioned nowadays indeed some of the other Herodotus doesn't is not really reliable for the pyramids account is now reliably refuted some pieces of his explanation may be factual, but it cannot yet be determined which parts are the truth. Modern archaeology has given us remarkably few clues about large pyramid construction techniques, and so the gap between what is known and what is possible is frustratingly large. 
the only building technique that most everyone can agree on is the employment of ramps to drag the blocks upward. Let's talk about ramps. There remain a few isolated examples of ancient Egyptian construction ramps that were never dismantled. But the size, slope, <laughs> quantity... <laughs> I know I usually stream Trackmania, but let's talk about pyramid ramp structures for a second. Uh, these are some of the different designs, right? For how they might have built the pyramid. Um, one of the, 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 the most like, oh, let's, let's build a pyramid. One of the most easy to think of designs is the one behind my face cam. The, uh, the Arnold design, which is just that one right there. However, the problem is, if you build a ramp like this, that ramp requires more material than the entirety of the pyramid itself. So you effectively have to build two pyramids. Um, it's not practical, and because it can't be too steep, if you're like you're pulling, you know, really big stones, this does not really make sense. Um, this one uh, behind my face camera right now, the Goyon structure. The problem with this one is that it uh, goes around the pyramid. So the pyramid would be like inside of this and you would pull the stones all the way up, spiraling around. If you make a ramp that looks something like this, you're not going to be able to check the architecture of the pyramid while you're building it. So let's say one worker messes up and places some stones inaccurately, it's going to be a logistical nightmare to fix. Um, this one is wild, I'm not familiar. This one is wild, this one is wild. But the, the Houdin ramp is the one we're looking at. This is a really solid case for how the pyramid was built, in my opinion. And path such ramps might take on the Great Pyramid is highly controversial, and there is nothing close to a consensus about them in Egyptology. Please fix cam and border. Oh, I see it's messed up. Thank you. proposed method of construction comes from French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin. In the Jean -Pierre. early 2000s, Houdin developed a comprehensive this guy's my favorite construction anime model character. for the Great Pyramid using an internal ramp after having received the suggestion Honestly, from his father Henry, whatever. a retired civil engineer. <laughs> this work culminated around 2008 when Houdin co-authored a book with Egyptologist Bob Breyer presenting the idea of an internal ramp to the wider public. There was also a documentary made about this collaboration titled Khufu Revealed, and it's one of the more enjoyable stories told about investigating the Great Pyramid. You can watch it on YouTube, and I've linked it in the description. So, so this guy, he basically got the idea for this from his uh, father, who was a civil engineer, and then he just dedicated his life to researching, could they have built the pyramid this way? Or like, how could they have built it? And this is his theory, right? Uh, no one believes him Just in recently, Egypt when he proposes it. Just of 2022, Houdin published a long-awaited update to his Great Pyramid construction theory in a 154-page paper on academia.edu. I've linked that paper in the description as well. This new paper incorporates data and analysis from the Scan Pyramids mission, which in 2017 announced the discovery of several hidden empty spaces within the Great Pyramid. These spaces include a corridor-like void. Above this is the, the one that entrance, was explored today. An enormous cavity known as the big and then void the massive above big the void up gallery, here, and a small void high on the northeast corner, like the notch and cave that are visible lower on that northeastern side. With this new paper of Houdin's now published, it's a good time to take a closer look at his ideas. But the story of Jean-Pierre Houdin is far more than a novel approach for a ramp to drag blocks We get upward. diagrams! It's a story that touches upon all of the problems Egyptology Animations. has with gatekeeping, and that most fundamental question of who gets to tell the story of the pyramids. An extremely concise synopsis of Houdin's main <laughs> ideas are as follows. The Great Pyramid may have been constructed using an internal spiral ramp in combination mm -hmm. with an external straight ramp on the south side. Mm -hmm. The external ramp would only reach about one-third up the pyramid and be responsible for transporting the heaviest granite and limestone that beams could work. that make up the ceilings of the upper chamber. The Grand Gallery, opposite the external ramp, could leverage its size and slope to hold counterweights on a sled. The weighted sled would use ropes to connect the largest blocks and assist hauling them upwards. 
Following completion of the king's chamber, the internal ramp would facilitate the building of the upper two thirds of the pyramid without just the like, excessively large external ramp. This is important, okay? This is important. Take notes, guys. Basically, it's all about how did they lift the stones in the king's chamber? That's the biggest mystery. These granite stones, how did they get them up there? These two concepts an internal spiral ramp and the grand gallery counterweight opposite an external ramp are Houdin's most important ideas. His construction model has other details and we'll analyze some of those as well, but the ramp design and counterweights are the core of his theory. These two main ideas solve some of the largest problems faced by the builders of the Great Pyramid. The internal ramp removes the need for a prohibitively large external ramp. It also would allow the pyramid geometry to be constantly checked, which would otherwise be obscured by so a this spiraling is, yeah, the two problems. Ramp. Long the ramp or spiral. Ramp opposite the Grand Gallery but maybe something in between. allows the largest blocks to be elevated onto the pyramid without needing to change direction or be hauled by 600 workers per block. Combined human strength faces logistical problems when scaling to numbers that high. Jean-Pierre Houdin's ramp concepts were innovative, but they were also supported by a reasonable Just amount ask of the Egyptians. evidence that is plain to see. It's the crazy Dynasty though that Sun Temple of Neusera has a very It's crazy that there are so many like mysteries around it. People don't say like, "Oh, but what they found out." I don't know if they have a definitive answer. Clear internal ramp structure. So yeah. the building concept is present in the archaeological record. Also, the Grand Gallery has I don't know visible if there is a and answer. staining marks along its lower sides, and these could only be caused by a great deal of repetitive force. But despite the worthiness of his ideas and the amount of detail presented by Houdin, almost everyone in academic Egyptology ignored or dismissed his theories out of hand. It was only Egyptologist Bob Breyer, a specialist in mummies <laughs> with a little connection to the pyramid. It's like, it's like the perfect anime plot. This guy, he, he has the theory to like solve the entire mystery. No one believes him except for his one like crazy friend who also studies the same topic. And then the guy that you saw earlier, um, this guy. He's called Zahi Was. He's like the big corporate anime villain from the Ministry of Egyptian Antiquity. Who, uh, as you'll you'll soon see, the reason why he's so opposed to this theory is that if it's true, then he is in part responsible for da permanently damaging the pyramid. Um, because there's a part of the pyramid called the Great Step which this guy believes was used as um as like a gap like a small gap to 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 raise stones and they thought it was like a oh just a step in a staircase so they filled in a missing part so that tourists can walk through it they just essentially added a bunch of uh <laughs> concrete to the pyramid to fill in like a missing step a broken step so this guy the, the anime villain is liable for kind of damaging the pyramid, if if he is correct with his theory, Who was this is like it, there's a lot of politics in this too. To help him get the access <laughs> needed to further his work. Briar was granted access to climb the Great Pyramid. You'll see, and you'll document see. Document the notch and adjacent cavity on the northeastern corner, which corresponds to where Houdin theorizes the internal ramp would have made a turn. Prior to Houdin, nobody had presented a plausible explanation for these interesting features. How long After is left? Uh, 19 minutes. For this it gets better. Time, however, Houdin was denied permission to follow up with thermal camera inspections within the cavity. This was in his the documentary. This was in his documentary. He wanted to check one part with a thermal camera, literally not even touching the pyramid. Just like, can I go up the pyramid, look at it with a thermal camera? And they said, no, no, you can't. Actually, you cannot. That's too dangerous. His friend could, without a thermal camera, just look at it. But they weren't allowed to go up there with a thermal camera. The revolution in 2011 also created enormous complications. It would mark the end of his official collaboration with institutional Egyptology. But while Houdin was greatly constrained with his ability to continue research, his ideas were popular enough that scientists began contacting him about methods to investigate further. 
The most important method proposed to further it's investigate all a pyramid the pyramids scheme. was muography. It's all a this pyramid scheme. The detection of internal spaces within the masonry based upon how many muon particles either pass through or get absorbed by the stonework. The culmination of the collaboration between Houdan and a group This of is the big thing by the way. This is how they found out from around the world today. was the Heritage Innovation and Preservation Institute founded <laughs> in 2015. This HIP Institute led a consortium to launch the Scan Pyramids mission, a scientific expedition using non-invasive scanning techniques to analyze the internal structure of the it pyramid. It is so smart. But the Egyptian Ministry of... It, it is so smart. They go into the bottom room of the pyramid, which is below the Queen's Chamber, put like a reflector here, and then it receives like muon particles coming through the pyramid from all angles. And then they can check where there are gaps and stuff. Antiquities is very protective about who it gives permission to conduct Super smart. Search. So smart. And Houdan writes in his new 2022 paper, quote, The only drawback, the mission had obtained its authorizations under the condition of being agnostic and that the data of the possible discoveries being put at the disposal of the researchers for free. Consequence for me, I was deprived of participating in the mission because of my work on Khufu's pyramid, and I will not appear in any document published by Scan Pyramids. End quote. Houdan elaborates that the mission of investigating the pyramids and the opportunity for discovery was more important than any personal credit he might receive. But this guy, this guy is such a chad, right? So he, what, what he did when he worked with these people is he said, "Okay, it's cool. That you guys want to do this with me." But from here on out, I'm signing off the mission. Because these guys don't like me, the, the pyramid people. So therefore, I will just reclude myself from all research so that they can't say, oh, he's in it and he's a conspiracy theorist. You guys go find the results. I have to just sit this out and not participate at all. He didn't want any credit, anything whatsoever on the papers. He just wanted the results to be out there. The pyramid people. Egyptian Ministry of Antiquity, okay? The pyramid people. As the old saying goes, no good deed ever goes unpunished. And a self-described scientific committee led by former minister Zahi Hawass was appointed to oversee the work done by Scan Pyramids. Here is Hawass explaining the process during an on-site visit of the mission. When you have a report of the result of the work here, yeah. you should present it to the minister. Yes. And the minister will give it to the committee. The scientific committee the scientific to committee. be evaluated. In 2016, the mission released its first discoveries on the Great Pyramid, including a new hidden cavity high on the northeastern corner and a void behind the chevrons above the pyramid entrance. Here is how you stole 3K potential views from the video. Type one in chat if you actively research pyramid topics on your own. Press one, because I guarantee you rest your chest that 3,000 people would not search this out if it wasn't for my passion about the topic. I absolutely guarantee you this is not something that my viewers go and watch on their own. If you do, that's cool. But I'm, I'm sharing this amazing video. Zahi Hawass <laughs> described the scan pyramid. I'm literally right helping after him. These findings. That's the interview I'm taking from a French guy who knows nothing. Because there's no evidence. Look, look, look. The, okay. Very important what Zahi Hawass says here. Here's how Zahi Hawass described the Scan Pyramid's mission right after these findings. That's the interview I'm taking from a French guy who knows nothing. Because there is no evidence. Give me one evidence to support this. Actually, the Scanning Pyramid project, most of it is to support his theory. I must say, it is unfair. So, anime hero guy says, I don't want to be a part of this because they're going to use that I'm part of it as a way to discredit it. So he just... Goes out of it completely and just says, you guys do this, right? The villain guy still says, oh, hero guy is part of this, so it's bad. He, he tries to just discredit it based on that Jean-Pierre is part of it. He, he knew this was coming. Five-dimensional chess. So he just went out of it before it happened. Fair that Hawass prejudiced the Scan Pyramid's mission based upon his personal opinions of Jean-Pierre Houdin, who had recused himself from participating in it. That is not the scientific method, despite the name given to One step ahead. committee. The Scan Pyramid's mission would go on to detect a huge cavity above the Grand Gallery. It's in the so Pyramid, insane that this is in there. comparable in size and orientation. 
40 meters. There's a 40 meter room in the pyramid that literally we haven't explored. And you might say, oh, does this exist? The reason I'm talking about all this today is because this SPNFC, this means Scan Pyramids North Face Corridor, was something they detected with Muon technology. Um, it was explored today. That's the reason we're, lit we're talking about this right now. If you're just joining. <laughs> There's a there's many news articles posting about this. This right here, hidden corridor at nine meters, the north face. And here we are. And so, if this one was found with Muon technology, then the other one is probably also there. This is the corridor. That's the big thing. And this all kind of supports internal ramp theory. The Sahi Awas is not wrong when he says that. Like, it supports internal ramp theory. It does. But it's also just, like, physical, scientific evidence of it. It's just a rock. <laughs> well, yes, it is, right? It is. The, the really fascinating theory, though, or thing, is that they can do this with every pyramid. Like, the fact that they can scan a pyramid and find that with it, and then later also... Use this on every other pyramid, it's just crazy. In the Great Pyramid, perhaps comparable in size and orientation to the Grand Pyramid. And so, no, like, itself. okay, you might be thinking, like, what's the big deal? Why care? For example, I think it was in the Queen's Chamber. This is the bottom on the Queen's Chamber. Um, in 1870, um, a British explorer tried to just reach into one of these shafts, these air shafts in the pyramid, and he found some pieces of wood and brought it home as a souvenir uh, and kept that in a box. He then uh, passed away eventually and his daughter donated all of his like findings on trips and stuff to the British Museum. Um, but unfortunately, this piece of wood that they found down here, they miscategorized it um, in their like storage, right? So when someone went to look for it to try to carbon date the material to see like how old was this piece of wood inside the pyramid, uh, they couldn't find it. And it resurfaced, like they did find it again in 2021. And the wood dates back to 3500 BC to 3000 BC, which is round about like 500 years earlier than when they thought the pyramids were built, right around 2500 BC. But the idea is that the wood could still be older because wood was rare in Egypt at the time. Very warm, dry climate, right? So that the Egyptians were very scarce with their wood use and reusing it and stuff. Still though, that was just this small piece right here. This is a 40 meter like thing. They can find so much organic material in this. They, uh, they could find like the idea behind how it was built. Uh, fascinating. These findings of the big void were presented to Hawass's committee right? on September 13th, 2017. Houdin writes that in response There's to so the much report, interesting things the going on. imposed the following instructions. One, that no media disclosure was permitted at this stage. Two, the results must be published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal before being revealed to <laughs> the media. Also good. And three, the Scan Pyramids mission could not continue scanning work unless the first two instructions were complied with. These conditions would set the Scan Pyramids mission up for failure for many reasons. It frequently takes up to a year to get a scientific paper It takes paper so published, long to get a scientific paper. And it easy to keep such a huge discovery secret. However, due to the top-level expertise of the Scan Pyramid scientists and the significance of the results, the journal Nature agreed to fast-track the paper, and the results were reviewed and then published on November 2nd, 2018. They got it fast-tracked. That's how big this is. ...captivated by the announcement of the Scan Pyramid's big void, and it was truly a landmark moment for the pyramids of Egypt. It's easily the most important discovery at the Great Pyramid since Howard Weiss opened the so-called relieving chambers in 1837. But while the world was enthralled by this surprising discovery, a cohort of academics and Egyptologists were quite saddened. 
David Lightbody, Yo. who would later publish a paper a questioning the <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Chad is having a great old movie day with me. Yeah, We're watching some, the pyramids. Uh, I got you some water, by the way. Oh, he got me some, some water? Wait, let me... Yeah, yeah, but it's like the, the local... Oh, yeah, the yeah. local water. Yeah, no, I see I don't that. Wanna, like, no, don't show it. I'm not sponsored by that water yeah. brand. You're right. You can just put it in... This one is uh, water fridge as well. You can... fridge, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can put it in the water fridge. That's right, good. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Who's that? That's Bear. Bear the man. Bear, I want to tell you about this and I want to hear your reaction. All right, okay. So, you know the pyramid, right? The yeah, Great yeah. Pyramid of Egypt. Uh, basically, they made a discovery today, or they announced a discovery. Really? Like a new thing? Which is that on the north face corridor of the pyramid, uh, they found... this? Y yes, I... <laughs> This is Reuters, ma this is Reuters though, news. And the this is a north face corridor of the pyramid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was discovered in 2017 by the Scan Pyramids Project, where they did like a space scan of the pyramid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they found this corridor, and now they were able to explore that that actually exists. Oh so the existence God. of this, uh, sorry, I'm not even showing, the existence of this uh, implies the existence of this too, because they found that too. The big, the big void. The big void. Isn't that ridiculous? I have to be honest, chat. I actually love this type of stuff. This is more interesting to me than dark matter <laughs> in the universe. The big void in the pyramid. The scan pyramids B of BV. The big void. Yeah, because what what else is there? Is the rest just solid rock, or is there? Uh, well, they found like some anomalies near the top too, but the right. most notable was the North Face corridor and the big void. That's crazy. You, I'm, I'm just getting my outlet for this today, and then I never have to talk about it again. I'm also going to play a Trickmania pyramid map later. <laughs> but, um... Is the North Face in the map? In the what? In the Trickmania? Oh, I know, it's like a 10-year-old map. Oh, okay. <laughs> this was before uh, Scan Pyramids. Oh, before the scans, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we're watching, like, a documentary about... So, what this does, though, or what people think this is right now, mm -hmm. is uh, something that looks like the Grand Gallery. Yeah. That they used as a counterweight or leverage to pull up these big granite blocks in the king's chamber. That's yeah, this part. Yeah, the king's chamber is the most impressive to me. Yep. Because, yes, the square blocks are So much granite. But the size of some of those blocks are insane. Yep. We gotta try to get through the rest of this before a couple of the days, so let's just speed through it. But thank you so much, Bear, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, for the water. Can I do dab number two? Oh, you just can. Oh, guys, get ready. Wait, 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 wait. Chat, you know what to do. Can I get some dabs in chat? Because I need dabbing. To, yeah, I need to see how's my form. Oh, he's pretty decent. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I haven't warmed up. Okay. Oh, ooh, that's a good dab. That's I, deep. I feel like my my knee like kind of popped. Ooh, I think you pop your knee, dabbing. <laughs> Yo, Doc, I, uh... <laughs> what happened? Oh, yeah, I had that too hard, yeah. All right, enjoy the... Enjoy the pyramids. <laughs> Thank you so I'll much. I'll go downstairs and research some pyramids. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, yeah, you yeah. gotta look into this. Yeah, yeah, All right, see you, Bear. See you, chat. Bye-bye. Bye. We could talk about this for hours. I'm... Uh, it's, it's crazy. We could actually talk about this for hours. But what I'm trying to get at here... It's trying to in pyramids results, trying to talk about posted this four days after the big void announcement. The Quote, pyramid situation. It's been a very tough few days. So this is um Egyptologist right after they announced the scan, and it goes like, "Oh, it's such a tough time right now because everything we believe is false." Yes. It's mentally formed. It's darkest Although before I the love dawn. Egyptology and archaeology. At times, it has caused massive headaches and heartaches. Wait, is the game on stream pyramids of the Egypt? The last few days have been one of those times. <laughs> the scan, the However, scan, the, the scan pyramids. It seems that it just might have been the case that it's darkest before dawn. End quote. Later, when Lightbody opened his paper titled Questioning the Void for Feedback, other researchers found that he simply deleted comments which disagreed with his analysis. Smart. I know we've wandered away from Houdin's theory. If you ever get people who disagree, just ban them. Is the most important Do you guys disagree with me? Story. Can you just say it's it if you think I'm to wrong? Highlight how notable critics have used the pretense of science to disguise their own <laughs> I disagree. Oh. Sadly, thank you for letting me know. Um, 
and this bad behavior okay anyone else gives other biased he's individuals gone. an excuse to dismiss scientific archaeology <laughs> that is essential to okay we gotta unban him circling back to the big void it is this discovery that is the central piece of evidence for hudan's new update on his pyramid construction theory in my opinion, the Grand Gallery as a construction ramp was always the strongest aspect of Houdin's ideas. But the original design he presented didn't seem optimal. Right. So the, just to quickly explain this, because it's it's a bit like high in detail. What he's saying here is that Houdin's theory for using this as a leverage ramp doesn't make sense when you got all the heavy stones here. Like one, two, three, four, five. These are 70 ton granite stones, okay? It doesn't make sense to put a, a ramp to lift them underneath, because how on earth are you lifting 70,000 kilograms up there from here, right? So you'd kind of need this to be higher. Most of the largest block. And so that's what he's saying is like having a ramp problem. up if here would solve this problem. This void is a single inclined space similar to the Grand Gallery. Then it could be used to help drag those enormous stones yep. to the highest level. Makes sense. Makes sense. In support of Houdin's theory about the Grand Gallery. So this just supports but the theory. Even before the discovery of the Big Void, I think that Hawass and others were beginning to suspect that <sighs> very interesting idea part. For very interesting part. Story had merit. Listen up. It was particularly interesting that in the 2017 book, Giza and the Pyramids, this is written by the villain guy, there is not a single mention of the so-called Great Step at the top of the Grand Gallery. You would think a stone with such a famous name, placed exactly in the center of the pyramid's north-south axis, would at least deserve a token of recognition in the definitive history of Giza. In fact, the so-called Great Step is the central focus of Egyptologist John Romer's 564-page book titled The Great Pyramid, published in 2007. What is Here the Great is Step? Here he is on the TV show 60 Minutes, what is it? obsessing about it. When we get to this, which is the masterpiece of the whole bloody pyramid, <laughs> it's the refoundation of the pyramid. You know, this is like, this is the center line. We're setting it up again. It can only be intentional that Zahi Hawass would omit mentioning the so-called Great Step in his Giza and the Pyramids book, and I think Jean-Pierre Houdin is the reason why. If Houdin is correct, and the Great Step is not a step at all, but instead a trench as it looked over 100 years ago, then Egypt's Antiquities Department has greatly damaged the Great Pyramid with this inaccurate restoration. A trench would better facilitate the passage of... So, if this was, if the, grand, if the Grand Gallery was a leverage mechanism to raise it, and this was just a trench for ropes, and Egyptology thought it was a step and, like, literally placed a bunch of concrete here, then they are liable for permanently damaging the pyramid. So they kind of have to deny this theory, because if not, uh, that's pretty bad for them, right? Through it rather than a step which would the, cause if this theory is correct then they kind of ruin the arabic tradition a part of the pyramid of calling this stone the great step is what led the antiquities department to assume it was a step and that the upper portion was missing due to damage zahi hawass is the former director of the ministry of antiquities i'm playing Many a couple of days restoration jobs were conducted by the ministry including some in the 1990s under his direction this gives plenty of motive for Hawass to reject Houdin's ideas because they implicate the ministry in destroying a critical piece of history. But rather than acknowledging his conflict of interest and recusing himself like Jean-Pierre Houdin, Zahi Hawass had no problem asserting his authority over the scientific process. This is why I'm heading a team. And with me are three foreigners who are expertise on the pyramids and we are correcting them. In that context, it is no surprise that institutional Egyptology... So, I, I, I think we kind of summarized this a lot. Uh, Houdin updated the theory, added like, okay, if the Great Void is um, a ramp, how would that affect the theory? Added some, you know, new things, casing stones. Um, and and yeah, you can see some, some animations of it. And thinking about but basically, it more, I believe I can improve big things are happening model. in the pyramids it's right now. Convinced for or against what I am most excited about is the potential that because the north face chamber is proven to exist, 
that should like this is proven right now they found that in scan is proven that should also mean that the big void exists and if they ever explore this we'll likely understand one how old the pyramid is two how it was built and three if it was internal ram theory or not right i hope that will one day be the case but getting through this amount of stone without breaking the structure is very difficult i don't know how they're gonna do that um and yeah but guys today we're gonna play <laughs> A pyramid RPG track. Try to get the world record. It's gonna happen after a couple of the day. It's called Pyramid of Cheops. Um, and I'll, I'll see if I can get the world record on it. First, gonna explore it. It's it's this one. And um, world record eight minutes to explore the entire pyramid. This is how it looks inside. Maybe we get a sneak peek. It's a bit weird that they haven't studied the insides of Trekmania RPG maps to figure out the pyramids yet, because we apparently know the answer. Uh, guys. This is the Pyramid of Cheops track. Let me show it to you. Um, this is it. Is it gonna load? Is it gonna load? Also, I missed all the alerts, but thank you so much, General Gaming, for the five gifted. Here we are. Uh, what this is, is a Trekmania RPG track. These are adventure maps that people build, often with a lot of obstacles, and often with a theme. So this is in the shape of, you guessed it, a pyramid. Though this one is called the Pyramid of Cheops. It kind of looks like the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, which is one of the oldest pyramids. Um, and the construction technique was different. And if we look inside, there's uh, maybe we'll find some part of the track route. Like here. This is part of the track inside the pyramid. Um, entire map is world record 8 minutes by Birkin. I want to do one exploration run and then we can do a, uh, a world record attempt. Khaki's starting tomorrow, yeah. What are you doing, Step Pyramid? Wait, I have the wrong car skin for this. If I want to be a pyramid explorer, I need this one. Doesn't really match it. Oh, and here's the track if you want to see the track page. Pyramid of Cheops by Maverick, 2014, 75982. Used in a 2014 RPG competition. I used to actually be very good at these. These RPG competitions. One second. Do you see this, chat? Wait. Do you see this? Look at this. This is the trophy I received for winning the Caesar RPG Cup 2019. And it looks really good back on my shelf. It looks amazing. It looks like a male chicken. It even has, like, if you look closely, you see that Trek Mania car? Originally, it was going to be one big Trackmania car. I can't hold it completely still. But, um... It was too hard to print. So they just gave me, like, a, a, a phallic shape. Uh, yeah, well, it's still cool to have a trophy, right? But, if you want to help me get a cooler trophy, then, guys, the Streamer Awards is still happening. I'm still nominated for Best Speedrun Streamer. You have two days left to vote. Category number 10, Best Speedrun Streamer, uh, right here, virtual. And if you win, you get... Is there a picture of it? I think it's on their Twitter. Exclamation mark vote if you want to help, please help. This is the award you get. It looks like a people. You get a people happy that you can have on yourself. This is how the trophy looks. It takes like two seconds to vote. Streamerwards.com. Streamerwards.com. The Streamer Awards. Category 10. Virtual. Category 11. Nixlai. Send it. That's, that's, that, that, that would help so much. Uh, okay. Let's go. Play track. Why your chair look kind of phallic? I don't know, dude. A lot of things look phallic. Just stature-wise. Here we go. 
Let's explore together. So I take it that we start in the... Um, the do, you, do, you guys, do you guys want to know something interesting about the pyramids? There is like a main entrance that the Egyptians built. And then and we're talking about the Great Pyramid here before anyone says like, Oh, that's not true. Great Pyramid of Giza. The Egyptians built a um, an entrance and then blocked it off and then hit it. Uh, when they cased the entire thing in limestone. Uh, and at some point, um, the Islamic Caliphate tried to destroy the pyramid and enter it because they meant it was uh, unholy of a structure. Uh, and there is something called the Robber's Tunnel, which at some point was made by grave robbers. Where they um, they enter the pyramid just with brute force, digging their own tunnel into like a part of it. And at first, it was kind of believed like this was the way they got in with goods. But many historians now believe the robbers' tunnel exists as a way to get out, like stolen treasure and goods. To bring that out of the pyramid would be easier through the robbers' tunnel. Because it's kind of impressive if you have such a big pyramid and you just randomly dig on a hunch and end up completely hitting one of the few inside passages. Interesting pyramid lore. Where the hell do I go? I'm already lost. Here? No. For more uh, <laughs> questions about the tour, please consult... Uh, Consult me. I will. I'll be happy to help. Answer anything you want. I got to use all my pyramid knowledge for something. Our alerts on. They're off right now. But yeah, this entire map is just a maze. Um. No, this does not look too promising. Maybe that's just bait. Maybe the idea is you get speed and go back where you came from. See, that makes a lot more sense. That makes a lot more sense. What is ramp theory? Okay. So obviously, if you're going to build a pyramid with 2.2 million stones, uh, you encounter a problem, which is that the more stones you place on top of one another, the harder it is to place the next stone and the next stone. Therefore, many people have theorized how on earth they do it, because it's very impressive to stack that many stones on top of one another. Just logistically placing like stones 140 meters in the sky is pretty, pretty tough. Um, and one of the leading theories that I believe in, I personally think, is the, one of the more likely explanations for the pyramids is the uh, internal ramp theory. Originally proposed by Jean-Pierre Houdin, French architect. Which is that as they built the pyramid, they had a ramp going inside the pyramid that they hauled the stones up. Um, and then they used certain parts of it, like the Grand Gallery, as, as counterweight. And just today, there was a big announcement in Reuters and other magazines, but the Reuters one is the one I retweeted, uh, where they've detected some some empty corridors and chambers. They call them voids in the pyramid. Uh, five years ago, and today they finally proved and showed pictures of the voids being an actual thing. One of them. But the biggest one is not explored yet. And I'm super hoping we will see that during my lifetime. I just want to know. I think there are people in chat who already know how the pyramids were, made, were built. I don't know. I haven't heard a satisfactory like answer. Because all theories have their, their problems. Even the internal ramp one has its problems, but it's the most likely one that I've heard. It's like one of the most impressive things on Earth. 
And it's so old. Like 5,000 years ago. Oh! Yo. Yeah, I got your tinfoil hat, just in case you go too deep. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. that's good. Yeah, so, no worries. appreciate that. So, anyways, where was I? The internal... <laughs> 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 the internal ramp theory is a pretty good... <laughs> Bro, hooked me up with a tinfoil hat. I think, you know, that's pretty good. The way I've seen them, they look like boats. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There we are. So... That's good. No, so like, the problem with an external ramp is that uh, the ramp has to be so big. Like, I know you guys think you've seen a big ramp. The external ramp, if you're only using an external ramp, has to be like several kilometers. I, this is, this is, I think it's correct. Right? Bigger than the pyramid itself. And the pyramid consists of 2.2 million blocks of stone. It would be a massive ramp. And they'd kind of have to build two pyramids for that. Um, which I don't think they would have, because one is already tough enough. So, I have problems with external ramp, and then there's the one where you go like, Oh, but what about an external spiral ramp? Kind of just encasing the structure. Problem with that is, you then can't check the architecture as you build. Oh, I think I see it. You can't check the architecture midway, so if one of the workers mess up, place a stone a bit wrong compared to the rest, it's it's hard to check. And they're so they were so precise with building it that I think they wouldn't want to risk messing up at any point with something like that. I do not see it. So therefore, um, I'm an internal ramp supporter. Thank thank you for coming to my TED talk. What's your theory? Come back to TMNF RPG. Uh, I only came <laughs> came back to talk about pyramids. <laughs> it's the pure. It's the pyramid talks. Elevator. Okay, one of the more convincing things I've heard. Do you, you want to know what it is? Enderman. Enderman built the pyramids. Because hear, hear me out. Endermen, they pick up blocks and they teleport. And they often spawn in the desert. Where there's sandstone. So what if an Enderman picks up a sandstone, teleports all the way up the pyramid, places it down, teleports back down. Up and down, up and down. Do I have... Is this correct? This feels so wrong. Oh, I have it. Okay. I have that checkpoint. Uh, now I'm kind of lost. There has to be like a sneaky path here. Oh, what if you go... Oh, it's so sneaky. This is it, right? Yes. Hidden chamber in the pyramids. The big void. <laughs> okay, answer me honestly though. Answer me honestly. Do you find this all fascinating, or are you like, Virtual, please, seriously? Stop talking about it. Just stop. I don't know if you're right or wrong, but just stop. Like, one for stop, two for continue. Okay, good. Because, okay. Because I still got beef. I still got tea to spill. So it's not just... So one thing is is placing the materials, right? Here's another thing. Granite is a very solid material. And there's granite in the pyramid. Big blocks of granite. And so archaeologists have wondered, like, how on earth did Egyptians cut granite? Because modern day, we use, some, we use diamond sauce. Like a saw made of diamond blade. Uh, while it's being like heavily cooled down. And back in the Egyptian era, they used copper. Copper is pretty soft in terms of uh, rocks, like hardness of rocks. And so you would think that a copper saw can't really cut through granite. Um, but that's not true, it can. Just very slowly. Very slowly. At the rate of like a few millimeters an hour. 
And the lore is that the Great Pyramid of Giza took 20 years to make, to build. From start to finish, 20 years. But at that proposed rate, they'd have to play something like one stone every two minutes. Night and day. Um, with vacations and whatnot. The logistics of it seem like a nightmare, also while cutting these stones. I think what the likely answer there is, is that they did do it with copper because they have not found anything else in archaeology. Um, they do it with copper, just slowly, just very slowly, like not in 20 years, no shot. It had to take longer than 20 years or they're just insane. But like the attention span you have to have to sit with a copper saw and cut through a granite block of stone and then transport it 900 kilometers to another city to build a pyramid. Like Jesus Christ, man. I, I could not imagine. That's what slaves are for. So they've done research on this too. Were the pyramids built by slaves? The idea originates, well, first of all, slavery very common back in the days, unfortunately. But the idea originates from a Greek uh, guy called Herodotus, who has one of the earliest surviving writings about the pyramids, um, where he, um, he says that, like, in order to make such a structure, you would need, like, a mad king kind of guy who just commands slaves around. You said something to that effect. But they've, like, recently found, um... the worker camps for the pyramids. Because when you build such a big thing and you need so many workers, you should be able to find evidence of those workers very close to the pyramid. Right? Like, people die of heat stroke, one guy's gonna fall down the stroke. You should find some evidence of human remains and, like, some proof that they lived there, because they had to live there. You know, you have to house all these people, give them food. And so just next to the pyramid, they recently found worker camps. And from what I've heard, the data shows, like, these people were fed well, they had healthy, like, bones and stuff. And it's more likely than not that these were just volunteers than slaves. Is what they're saying. I don't know. It could still be that they were slaves, just really well-treated slaves that were forced to work. We don't know, right? But they weren't treated poorly, I think is what the archaeological record shows. But this could also just be, and think about this, think about this, think about this. If you are Egypt, and you make so much money from tourism to your pyramids, would you rather say like, oh, this was built off terrible, evil slave labor, or paid volunteers that built this together in harmony? What's the best narrative for, for tourism? Like, you have to consider, there's a lot of politics that go into it, right? Norway doesn't like to talk about this, but people glorify Viking culture so much, and it was just terrible. Like rape and pillaging and stealing and theft and murder and blood sacrifice ritual. No, Vikings were cool, apparently. Like, dude, so much of antiquity is just built on terrible things happening. There's definitely one story you'd rather want to tell if you're if you're <laughs> the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquity. Also, if you haven't seen this before, this is a trick in the uh, old Trek Mania games. It's called cheating. It doesn't work on the new game because they patched it, but this is uh yeah, just it works in this game. No, it's um you see that down there? That's water. Uh, lift it into the sky, and when you drive on it, it it looks invisible, so it looks like you're floating. Actually, you are just driving on water. So 
So it's very hard, right? It's very hard to... To know all these things after so much time has passed. But I think, like, the things that they know already is super fascinating. I, I, I watched extensively pyramid documentaries <laughs> throughout December for, like, three weeks straight. It was all I could watch on YouTube. And I'm so happy to be able to, like, at least talk a little bit about it. But I made a deal with my editors. I only talk about it today, and then after today, we never mention the pyramids again. Because it's, like, seeping into every virtual TV video, and it's pretty bad. I have to fill out an apology form every time I mention pyramids. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. They made a, like... I had to submit one recently. Where is it? Is it that old? Oh, I've been pretty good, I think, if I haven't mentioned it this recently. No, it has to be more recent. Oh, I found it. Uh, yeah. They, they made this for me. So... Reason for behavior. Um, random chatter brought it up. We were talking about conspiracy theories. <laughs> I saw a shape that reminded me of the pyramids. Uh, I hate my editors, but I just made it editor and typed Buckley for clarification. At pyramid meme, I was trying to be funny, but I'm not funny. And then there's, I will hereby never talk about pyramids again because it doesn't matter. They were 5,000 years ago. Move on. And I happen to miss the box. I, unfortunate there. Didn't see the box. So. Yeah. Sorry. Oops. Oh, we're, ta oh, we're talking about it while playing a pyramid map now? Oh, I'm so sorry. Thoughts on the Bermuda Triangle? It's kind of an interesting spot on Earth because it, I mean, a triangle looks like a pyramid, right? And a pyramid is inherently interesting. Um, however, I don't think the Bermuda Triangle is that, that interesting at all because it's just like... What I'm really hearing when I think about the Bermuda Triangle is just skill issue. You know? There's all these, like, bad boat navigators that somehow all crash in the same spot. Like a difficult turn on the track of the day, you know? Oh, you missed one difficult turn? Oh, boo-hoo, you know? Oh, this risky fin is so difficult, I can't. Okay, well... Others can. <laughs> okay, I'm missing something here, am I? What am I doing wrong? Because it looks like I would like to get up over there. This is a discovery run. After this, we're going to try to get world record. It could be that you hit the dirt hill, but I don't think so. Could you really hit this? It looks kind of stupid. Oh. Any conspiracy theories you believe in? The one I mentioned to chat all the time is airplane mode is fake. Airplane mode is not real and it can't hurt you. I don't put my phone in airplane mode because I don't believe it can cause any damage. Airlines would have to be responsible if all passengers on an aircraft decided collectively not to turn on airplane mode and it brought the plane down. And they get they would get sued so hard if everyone could carry a device that could literally risk the lives of other passengers. You could be a terrorist just by not turning on airplane mode, you know? Like that would be crazy. Al-Qaeda captures another plane. Just doesn't turn on airplane mode. 
Like, what? I'm not trying to give anyone ideas here. Please don't try this at home. This is just... A game theory. <laughs> but, it is kind of weird. It is kind of weird. If it was dangerous and they allow you that. Dude, I don't know what to do here. Here's a trick. This is an ancient trick. You're playing an RPG track and you don't know where your car is. Use the horn. Let's have a look-see. Uh, I think I need to get to here. Maybe it's back where I came from? There's nada here. Nothing here. Oh. Okay, nothing there. But if you went up, like I did, anything, anything, anything... I mean, I literally don't see it. Doesn't look like you want to go here. Oh, the... Oh, no. I don't think so. Unless... No. So what is it? I already tried landing up here. That looked unlikely. Maybe you bounce over. Just straight up bounce over. Can I miss a checkpoint doing that? It looks wrong. Somehow. Ah! Uh, maybe it's right. I could possibly miss checkpoints here. But I will say the use of checkpoints is kind of ruining my immersion because there's no checkpoints in the Great Pyramid, so. It's just a small detail that the mapper overlooked. How do you know? Well, they haven't found any. Hmm... Dude, I am... Did you guys see it? Have I missed it? Don't tell me you guys saw it. Wait, can you jump here? Gather speed, come through? I thought I tried that. No, I definitely try that. Maybe... Is there water? No water. In the pyramid. Oh! Oh! That's so cheeky! There's water here! How did I get there? Oh, I might have to wall bang up. Were the Aztec pyramids built using the same methods as the Egyptian, Egyptian, ugh, Egyptian ones? I don't know. Um, because I wasn't there when they were built. Neither of them, actually. Um, I was not present for the building of them. So I can't speak on the Aztecs' behalf. They might insist they had a better strat than the Egyptians. But the Aztec ones are crazy. There's a pyramid in Guatemala. Just middle of the modern day jungle. Back then, like a thousand years ago, it was a huge hotspot apparently. Or maybe two thousand years ago. Just incredible pyramid. It's like a three day hike to get there. Um, what's that channel called? Yes Theory went there. If you've seen Yes Theory on YouTube. Great channel. The boys went there. Um, and filmed some of it. It's a massive structure. But it's not like the same type of shape. It's more wide than it is tall. But that's maybe a Maya and not an Aztec pyramid. Oh, okay.
It's kind of crazy, though, like how... Okay, well, that's just unfortunate. How, how people ended up building pyramids in South America, in North America, in the Middle East. Like, it's like ingrained in our brain to just build triangle. Triangle shape is nice. Okay, now I think, now we have the checkpoint. The play is to go here. And then over there. That, well, okay, so I watched a lot of documentaries, right? When I was learning about this stuff. Do you guys want to hear the craziest one? I just want to tell you, I don't believe this, but this is a theory. And it is that, what was it called? Build, uh, bat Builders Ancient Techniques, no. It's called B.A.T. The, the movie. Like the, it's, it's, people call it Bat. I can't remember what the documentary is called. Bat Pyramids Documentary. Is it bat? The secret of bat chest. Wait, let me look it up. Pyramid documentary. Builders of Ancient Mysteries. Bam, it's called, not bat. Builders of the Ancient Mysteries. They had a theory that Egyptians built the pyramids, uh, then traveled the world um, to South America, taught the locals there how to build pyramids, uh, also traveled to the Easter Islands and built the statues there. Um, and some stuff in, in like middle North America, but that the Easter Island statues are kind of built by Egyptians. And like they compare, you know, oh, the, these stones in Peru are similar to these stones in, um, in Egypt and stuff. And make like similarities because where most people probably would say oh these are just humans landing on clever solutions individually kind of like how on a track of the day me and janik both find out oh this line just makes sense it's the best way to drive the map they say like no the egyptians had to have taught them how to do this could be i mean it is possible it's just i don't see it as more likely than than just the simple Oh, they just found out themselves. This is smart. Tour Hyrule across the Atlantic in a straw boat. Uh, yeah, it looks like a, f a, fl a fleet, a float. We call it a float, huh? Norwegian. But that was to prove how the Polynesians ended up in Polynesia, I think. But were the Polynesians native to Egypt before they traveled? A raft. Because I didn't know that, if that's the case. Contiki, yeah, that's a great, great story. Great documentary, too. In Norwegian, we had a... In Norwegian. In Norway, we had a show that I really liked on TV uh, called um, Kvitt eller Dobbelt, which means, like, do you want to quit or double? Kind of similar to the current TikTok trend, where it's like, yeah, do you want this or double it and send it to the next person? Uh, it was a game show, and the premise was you pick a person who's, like, really passionate about one topic. So you'd have a contestant who was like, 
super passionate about football World Cups, right? And then you'd have an expert ask them really high detail questions about their topic. So he would get like, who got a yellow card in the final in 1994? And stuff like that. Double or nothing. Maybe it's a show elsewhere. I remember one of my childhood crushes was uh, <laughs> a girl who was there and did an episode about Kontiki, the float, the raft. And she was so smart and I was like, damn. I wish I was that smart. She won the entire thing. Oh. What the fuck? The Kontiki girl? Yeah? I had the same crush. You have the same crush? Yes. <laughs> I bought like a book about Kontiki because I thought she was so hot. Wait, really? Yeah. It wasn't just me? Dude, she was so smart. She, she was incredibly smart. I was so impressed. Yeah, I, I literally like, uh, there's a museum in Oslo called the Kontiki Museum. And I got my parents to take me to the museum because I thought the girl was so hot. I remember my grandpa took me to the... Norwegian National Science Museum and then I saw Kontiki and it reminded me just like oh my god yeah that that girl was amazing yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was just watching downstairs I was like oh my god we had the same crush <laughs> <laughs> but yeah if you guys don't know the Kontiki story you should check it out There's, they made a good, cool movie about it I think if we look it up now it's gonna be weird because we were teenagers and she was a teenager too and you can't like yeah it's Im imagine having a crush on, uh, on Hannah Montana as a kid yeah, yeah. kind of that same thing right so it wouldn't be like, oh, you can't go back and say the same things. No, now. yeah, no, exactly. But she was very smart, but, a but formidable you, woman. But you could call like like a like a childhood crush. Yeah, is different. Yeah. It is different. Uh, yeah, I, I just I had to run upstairs to tell you that because I was I was like, what the fuck, you stole my girl? <laughs> <laughs> I, I hoped I would. <laughs> and the worst part is we're probably not alone in that. But there's probably like so many, so many dudes our age who watched Kriten and Ovid and was like, damn. Damn, she was smart. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with the math. Thank either. you so much. Yeah, intellect is attractive. That's why I hope to find a girl one day who wants to talk about the internal ramp theory. You know what I mean? I don't want to see her internal ramp until she believes in the internal ramp. You know what I mean? It's pretty bad. Ancient Egypt pickup lines doesn't really... Doesn't really work. It doesn't really work. Ancient Riz. Riz of the Ancients. This is gonna be a terrible YouTube video. I feel bad for whoever has to edit this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're out of content. It's pyramids or nothing. Is it here again? No. That's how you know she's the one if the pyramid line lands. Damn, are you like the... <sighs> What's that? I was out. Okay, well, I stopped myself. I don't think it's gonna land. Hey girl, are you like the pyramid of Dashur? Because I would like you to uh, bend over. <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna be single forever. <laughs>
I'm gonna be single forever, chat. It's just gonna be me and you. The pyramid crushed because they failed in construction. It's one of the biggest mistakes of ancient Egypt construction that still stands. They, the person who wanted the pyramid, I don't remember the... Who it was. Um, but they're made for like, you know, the, the pharaohs, right? And the pharaoh who wanted it, uh, wanted it very steep. But then they kind of had to change construction midway because it started breaking. They had to change the, the plan. Where am I going? What's up? Are you a pyramid? Because you got me bricked up. Yeah, no, guys. The, the pyramid lines... We, I, we, I have never heard a, a relationship coach say, Yeah, you know what the one thing you're missing is? <laughs> like, you got nice clothes, you got a nice appearance. You're taking care of yourself, you're working out. But like, the game's changed. You gotta start talking about these pyramids, bro. Girls love the pyramids. Never. It doesn't happen. Wait, have I been here? No, and I don't want to be there either. Um, or do I? What if there's like a secret path? What if there is a secret? Under, under, under? Oh, this is so sneaky. You go under the sand. Okay, I wouldn't have found that. You found the girl? How awkward is it though? To, to hit someone up and say, hey. I... <laughs> Jesus, I don't know. Wait, does this link? Okay, no, if you're... Okay, if you're 13... If you're 13... I would not mind when I, if I if I'm 13 I would not mind you know I was attracted to her when I was 13 she was very smart that's it's as simple as that if, if you guys were attracted to Selena Gomez when she was in Wizards of Waverly Place, it's the same thing. Why not show her grown up? People didn't find a picture. That she was on TV when she was a teenager. But see, that's what I mean when it, when it is weird, right? Last stream. God damn it. You guys are the ones making it weird, you know? Just leave it at smart? Okay. Probably should have said smart. And she was smart. She won. Like 10k? When you're 13? Whew. I remember thinking... I, I measured winnings back then in how many PlayStations and candy you could buy. It's like 10k Norwegian, uh, sorry, 10k dollars. Well, that's like 50 PlayStations and candy. That's so much. But it was all measured in the units of how many PlayStations you could buy. When I lived in uh, Brazil, we had something called uh, like a wish, 
a wish bracelet. And the idea is that you put a bracelet on your hand. And you make a wish. And when it falls off naturally, your wish should come through. But not if you, like, cut it off. If you get a scissors, if you're, someone else cuts it off, it doesn't happen. Only happens if it falls off naturally. Uh, I wished for candy. And then I got older, and I still had the bracelet on. And I was like... Well, even if this comes true, it's so stupid, I don't want candy anymore. I'm like four years older. I don't... <laughs> so I cut it off. <laughs> but it took too long. Suddenly it wasn't relevant anymore. I might, might have just passed up on free candy. But I realized that even if my wish come true, it's no longer my one wish. You found a new picture? Okay, don't go full stalker. Chat. Don't go full stalker, it's fine. I am curious how she looks now though. Is that her now? Okay, if this is her now, then you don't get to weird champ me anymore. That's a beautiful woman. And smart. And what a cute dog! Damn, that's an adorable dog. <laughs> Someone clipped this to her? Guys, don't be weird. Police, that's all I ask, okay? I'm not weird, you guys don't have to be weird. But if you could, you know... I mean... Kontiki, she's probably interested in the pyramids. Maybe if we cook up a really good pyramid line, we have a chance. Our best pyramid liner. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get to the kitchen and start cooking. Is this still Ruddock pace? So this is my discovery run. After this I'm gonna go for world record, which is 8 minutes. Are you a mummy? Cause I'd like to wrap you up. How about like... Are you a mummy? Cause... I, I'd like to call you one. <laughs> God, okay. I, I, the streams are usually more... Family oriented than this. That's Elris? Okay. Sorry. Call you is greater than make you. So are you watching Summit today playing Daisy? Have you tried playing Daisy yourself? Uh, no. I remember watching Lyric in it though. It's cool that that game is making somewhat of a return. I remember watching, uh... Like the, the original Battle Royale on Daisy. It's very good. Where do we go? Here? Oh, I think that's correct if you can get up here. Oh, no, I got baited. Uh, what? What then? Was there nothing here? No, like, hidden passage, no nada? Okay. That's... of interest. Um... Mm, mm, mm. Water! 
Aha! Oh, wait, I think I understand then. So here, gather speed, invisible water, and then go. The mummy one didn't work. I asked the girl and she said, nah. Okay, back to the workshop, boys. Mummy pickup lines are not the thing. <laughs> Shit. What's a plan B? What do you do when the mummy line fails? Yo, wait, I'm, I'm missing out on so many alerts. Penfold, you're the five gifted. It's just like, it's very hard as a streamer when the conversation kind of goes into a corner, like this one. And it's very hard to get the conversation away from this topic. You know what I mean? Like, we're kind of just stuck talking about pyramid pickup lines right now. And I have to look over a chat, and someone goes like, Ooh, I would like to explore your descending passageway. And it's like, okay, well, this started as a fun bit. It's no longer fun. I want to go home. I kind of want to go home. It's like you're at a friend's place and you can't leave. You're kind of just stuck. <laughs> I need to get picked up. And that's the finish! And I didn't miss a checkpoint! Okay, cool! That was the pyramid! We explored it in its entirety, 46 minutes! Very cool!